All right, NFL live stream of consciousness, rocking with you on a Tuesday. I think I have solved the riddle on who the first black owner in the NFL is going to be. So, you know, I've talked about uh, Diddy when the Panthers came open and he immediately started talking about the Kaepernick situation. And I thought that that disqualified him in the eyes of the owners because the owners are the ones that have created the situation. And remember, it's not just about the money. The owners have to approve you. And it's not purely a racial thing because in baseball, they said they didn't want Mark Cuban. So Kanye West is talking about buying it with the Donda Sports. I, I don't think they would want Kanye West just, just from what I've seen and from what people have seen in the media, do you think that they would want Kanye West as an owner? They're really cool and tight with Jay-Z, but, you know, they, they talk about pricing this thing at three or four billion. I don't know his pockets. He might have that liquid, but, you know, if he makes a group and a conglomerate once again with those conglomerates, only... The majority partner has that full control. The minority partners are just there to give money to pay and they collect their seats and that's it. Only one person controls it. So you're seeing that model kind of die out a little bit. So I, I, I stumbled upon this article and I was just like, oh, it makes sense. So I'm gonna pull it up here. There you go. Dwayne Johnson, Terramana Tequila, Eyes Global Expansion with Jägermeister deal. So you see here is so 640,000 cases of his tequila brand. You see a lot of entertainers are getting into the tequila and spirits market. You see uh, uh, LeBron has his uh, Lobos brand. Uh, Jimmy Fox has his brown sugar bourbon. A lot of people are getting into it. And it's because of what you see here at the bottom, Casamigos, they got sold for a billion. Uh, Ryan Reynolds' alcohol brand got sold for 610 million. So when Casamigos got sold, it was doing 140,000 cases. 140,000 cases for a billion. The Rock is doing 640,000 in 2021 alone. 640,000. Simple math will tell you that's four times as much. So he's, he might get four Bs. He might have other investors. That's two or three Bs. That's enough to buy a team. And if you notice, on the last episode, I talked about The Rock is working with the NFL a lot. The XFL deal that he purchased, it's going to be a training ground minor league. The, who did the Super Bowl opening? The Rock. The Rock has been peeping his head out poking his head out in a couple of different places. When it concerns the NFL, I think that they're grooming him to slide right into NFL ownership. He's going to have the paper to do it. And, uh, you know, he he's obviously a superstar. I looked on his Instagram the other day, 298 million followers. That's insane. So, yeah, I think, I think it's a... It's a fait accompli. I think it's going to be the rock, man. All the signs is pointing that way. I saw this deal, saw this uh, deal at yesterday in 640,000 cases. When this got a billion at 140, man, it, it just, it makes too much sense that it's going to be the rock. You know what I'm saying? The rock is universally loved. I haven't heard anybody besides Vin Diesel take shots at the rock. Everybody loves the rock. It's a nice home for him. NFL, former a uh, college football player. I think he signed in the NFL for uh, in the pre a preseason deal and got washed out. And that's when he went into wrestling and the rest is history. So shout out to the rock, man. Hopefully, you know, my suspicions are true, but I think I solved the riddle. I think I should get a prize. I don't know what exactly I should get, but I should get something. So, all right, let's get to the, to the conversations of the day. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, he had this cryptic post last night. Uh, about gratitude, thanked his ex fiance thanked former Packer teammates and the organization and all that good stuff. And a lot of people thought that meant that he's about to retire. Um, it sounded like a farewell post. And he went on uh, Pat uh, uh, McAfee. Is that, am I saying that right? 
um, he went on his show, whatever, the, the punter that's doing major numbers. He sounded like a 50 million a year deal with FanDuel. Shout out to him. Um, you know, leverage his situation into something great. You know, his leverage his opportunity. He's the only one that Aaron Rodgers will sit down and speak to. Uh, that's a hell of a, you know, pool to have. I think like on his YouTube show, he got like 70,000 live, 70,000 live viewers. That's, that's insane. But um, yeah, so he came out and said, nah, you know, that's not retirement. Then he has nothing to announce today. I think that the signs are kind of pointing that he is probably going to return to the Packers. I think right now he's just trying to get his guy, uh, Devontae Adams, a deal. Um, so I think all signs point that he's probably going to get back, but if they, they have to take care of Devontae Adams first, if they don't take care of him, then he's really going to be out. But, uh, if he's not going to accept him having a tag and that's some stand up shit to do. If we're going to keep it, keep it a hundred. At the end of the day, me personally, I just feel bad for Aaron Rodgers. I feel like he's going through it. Like, you know, the vaccine mandate stuff and all that stuff aside. He just seems like somebody that's just really unhappy and um, at least at a certain point. And, you know, he's talking about gratitude and gratitude is the first step to truly being happy. Uh, I believe being grateful for what you have. So maybe, you know, he's just trying to work that situation out. But uh, I just feel bad for him that, he, he you know, he just feels all these, uh, you know, attacks like he's being personally attacked all the time. And um, to live in that type of space is tough. But um, we'll see just on the back to the football field. We'll see if he returns. But uh, I think that it's pointing that way. He just wants to make sure that everything is taken care of before he does that. Um, Pro football talk. They got it up here. Dolphin Steve Ross did not ask Brian Flores to sign an NDA. Brian Flores has been out in these streets. Usually when people have lawsuits, they keep it quiet. Brian Flores has just been out and about. He was on, I am not an athlete talking. He talking on, on, on uh, get up on ESPN. He, he everywhere doing interviews. He's not going to let this die. Uh, it seems like the energy uh, surrounding it has kind of died off a little bit. I mean, I don't think there's going to be um, any real revelations until like depositions happen. I think the NFL is going to keep things tight. But, uh, yeah, he's just been out talking. I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I know that, uh, I forget it was who said it, was was upset that he sued the Texans after Lovey Smith got the job, saying that this must be my job. Like, that's kind of selfish. And he keeps talking about that he wants to change the hard minds of the NFL owners. Good luck with that. Good luck with that, buddy. They're never going to change. Less legal action. And hope maybe he has the legal ramification to do it, but that's not really changing the hearts of anybody. I mean, you might be able to change their mind because they get sued, but he's talking about they, he wants this to be like a religious experience for them. That's that's not going to happen here. They, they like who they like. I firmly believe if not for all this stuff that happened, the Texans would have signed Josh McCown and the Dolphins would have went with Jim Harbaugh. Which kind of leads me to believe that the timing of his lawsuit, you know, he wanted to do it the first day of Black History Month. And it seemed like the timing of his lawsuit maybe hurt his cause. Because you think about it, if he waits till after a guy with no head coaching experience, right? No head coaching experience, Josh McCown, not even a college. And I've never been a coordinator, never been nothing. If after he gets hired and after Jim Harbaugh gets hired, he could have said, look, there is one African-American head coach in the NFL right now. That would have been better, you know, but he was playing this semantics game. Like, let me follow, file the lawsuit on the first day of Black History Month. Nobody cares about that now. So I don't know. It, it seems like his strategy is off. I mean, like you're fighting against the big dog and like this strategy of doing all this extra talking. And um, I don't know. It's, there's a reason I think that lawyers tell you to keep quiet because they don't want you to show your hand. And like he's just showing it. So maybe this is part of their strategy, maximum pressure, try to keep it in the news cycle. But I don't think anybody cares. If you ask the 
vast majority of African American football fans, what do they care about more? Who their team is drafting or this Brian Flores lawsuit? I think they'll probably go with the, who their team is drafting. Because most people don't think this is going to go anywhere. But it would have been better optics. This is an optics game. It would have been better optics and better. Uh, I don't know if it would have gave him the opportunity to get better dis, uh, a chance for depositions, but it would have been better optics to file this lawsuit after the coaching hires are done and after quite possibly no black coaches were hired. There's only one black coach in the league and someone who just got hired, who took a job from a black man, has never coached before. That would have been better optics. So, I don't know. We'll see what ends up happening uh, with that. A uh, bunch of NFL stuff. The Patriots tag me. It's tagging season pretty soon here. That's why you'll never have what happens in the NBA happen in the NFL. They'll tag you. And you don't like it, you go ahead and here. Here's that tag. You want out? <laughs> no, you can't have out. You can have this tag. You you you, you want to go? You want to get traded? No, we're not trading you. Here's this tag. Merry Christmas. Pop it if you want. You can pop the tag if you want. It's going to there. You know, the rules still apply. So, you know, I always thought uh, the NFL PA agree. That, that might be the most egregious thing that they've ever agreed to. Forget the disciplines and everything. That might have been the most egregious thing they ever agreed to. That, hey, we're going to allow you to draft a player, have his rights for four years, and then be able to, for five years, uh, for first-round picks, four years for everybody else, and then have the right to tag him for another four years. Like, come on, man. Like, how could they agree to that? You know, you take that tag out, the NFL looks a lot like the NBA. And is that a is that so much of a bad thing? I think we're going to have forced quarterback movement this offseason, but the NFL will look a lot more like the, the, the NBA. So, all right, so we'll go ahead and leave it here. Last thing I want to talk about, that bubble situation got cleared up. You know, the, the NFL, uh, people are kind of fighting, pushing back a little bit uh, on a lot of the things they're doing. And. I don't think 10 years ago, health issues, training issues or not, agents would have had the nerve to come together to say that their players are going to boycott the scouting combine. That's what they did. And they got the NFL to move. Um, I, I just, I, I don't think that happens 10 years ago. So there is a bit of a sea change that is going on with these coaches, uh, with the coaches filing lawsuit, with you know players speaking out, what Aaron Rodgers is doing right now, uh, with the agents of players who are not even in the league speaking out a little bit. Um, things are kind of changing. So you know the hope for the NFL is that. I don't mean to be morbid. A lot of the owners are getting up there in age and soon it's going to be their sons uh, who run it. And hopefully their sons are a little bit more open-minded uh, when it comes to certain things, because it seems like their way of doing things is literally dying out and just like heavy hand and Hey, with the NFL, we can do whatever we want. Uh, it's kind of going away. And uh, once again, I, I, I don't blame Roger Goodell. I just think it's, um, I just think that it's tough handling the, the voices that he has to handle. Um, so, all right. We go, so we'll go ahead and leave it there. NFL game is a game. So what's up, man? What's up with you otherwise, you know? Uh, the game is a game. Always. <laughs>